Disclaimer. This true crime video may contain sensitive discussions of crimes. Viewer discretion is advised. The information presented is for educational and informational purposes only and shouldn't be considered professional advice. The relationship begins to fall apart, crumble, or fail. You have weak, weakening bonds. You get bored of the everyday routine and you get distractions. Relationships. No matter how harmless, even at the job, you might meet a new person and it could, could uh, strengthen into something else. It could uh, weaken the bond you have with the partner you have. Okay, turn around and face me. No earrings, necklaces, anything like that. There's, it's like, it's vanished. Like, she's not. Like when I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. Like she wasn't here, kids weren't here. So I have no idea. Or days or whatever, whenever they were home, I made sure that I wasn't a presence in his life. Like for hours or days or whatever, whenever they were home, I made sure that I wasn't a presence in his life. Well, were found days later in oil tanks where Watts worked. Shannon was found in a shallow grave nearby. What triggered it? What triggered it? Chris's mistress, and she was uh, interrogated by investigators. For me, like, when I think of what was he going through his head, I find it really hard to believe that I am the catalyst for all of this. Hi. <laughs> it's me. I miss your face. I was just calling to say hi. Call me back. Bye. You're so damn sexy. Thank you so much for coming out here with me, Christopher. I am having a wonderful time. You mean a lot to me, and I'm glad that you're having a blast. I am so out of breath. <laughs> I'm Elizabeth Watts, the DA filing nine charges against Chris Watts, including five counts of first degree murder. Also unlawful termination of a pregnancy and three counts of tampering with a deceased body. Watts is being held without bond in the Weld County Jail, and he will be in court tomorrow to be formally advised of the charges that he's facing. And remember, Watts is innocent until proven guilty, but some people they are already looking forward to the trial. We're seeing that everywhere, wondering if the prosecution will seek the death penalty. Well, County DA Michael Rourke says just too early to start thinking about that. Seem like a happy family. Even Shannon recently posted a video on Facebook detailing their entire relationship and saying Chris had stuck with her through health challenges from the very start. In hindsight, though, that, that he had taken this mistress yes. to the game. Right. But you did not know that. No. Your friends, but did, did, did they have any other friends that they were really, really close to that they did a lot of things with? The Thrive friends, um, but we didn't know any of them. But I, but I heard Shanam would talk about them. Um, but you guys had never heard any marital problems. No one had, neither one of them had no. discussed any of that. None anymore. of the marital, none of the financial, none of any of that. On the surface, it's just like this is the perfect family. Yes. yes. Did he sound worried? No, he didn't give a flying flip. I said, Chris, you know, I said I don't think you should do any media. I said, um, you're the last one to have seen them. So I don't think you should. And yet he did. I thank God he did it. I thank God in heaven that he didn't listen to me. We went to my colonoscopy. I tortured him. I rejected him. I, I pushed him away time and time and time again. He knew me at my worst, and he accepted me. I like opinion, but I'm pretty convinced that that woman and him did not get along. That woman and him did not get along very well, and the reason they stuck together was, hey, we're going to do kids, and I think they also need for me to stay in this relationship. According to my research, sometimes the necessity could be children. So, no, 
also stuck together because they were in a very bad financial bind. And I think that all relationships are held together in part by form of commitment, either based on desire, obligation, or necessity. Because they were in a very bad financial bind. And I think that she continuously disregarded it. And I think he messed up because he was too passive to say anything to her about it and really address it. We sync up in the cloud and stuff like that. I just I couldn't have like she had like tons and tons and tons of like phone contacts. I just couldn't have all that. But it's still kind of linked up at one point. But as far as like she asked me to get my, my own iCloud account, just to get my, my own iCloud account. Did you and Nikki ever fight? We never fought, but like I said, I had to like calm her down a bunch of times. Prosecutors say Watts killed his family to start a new life with his mistress, Nicole Kessinger. Types of deterioration. Yes, yeah, sudden and yeah, gradual. Sudden would be an example of infidelity. When somebody is not faithful to the partner, the partner's real life of the wish cannot be sustained. Gradual would be if you met somebody at work or a new friendship has occurred and you, as it goes on you see that okay, maybe this relationship has more potential than the relationship I have with my partner. And that will gradually push the old relationship out and push the new relationship in. Two children missing, I was going to do anything that I could. What mission? Some would call it terrorist plot. As of this moment, is still a go. That's a pretty exciting story. What's next? Lies on the ice? Well, let's speculate about mental health. No, we're not diagnosing anybody. We're f***ing speculating. Sit down and listen or shut the f*** up. No, not you guys. You know, the way. The point is, we're speculating about mental health and an avoidant male personality with a malignant female narcissist. Let's start off by discussing narcissism on a scale. This refers to the range or degree of narcissistic traits that an individual may possess. It can range from mild to self-absorption to full-blown narcissistic personality disorder characterized by a grandiose sense of self-importance, lack of empathy, and a tendency to exploit others. You remember that whole personal gain thing? Mm -hmm. Malignant narcissism, on the other hand, is a severe form. It's characterized by a combination of personality disorders and also often be displayed as aggressive, sadistic tendencies and a deep-seated sense of self-entitlement. So in summary folks, while narcissism on a scale refers to the spectrum of narcissistic traits, malignant narcissism is up here while regular narcissism is down here. Types of deterioration. Yes, sudden and yeah, gradual. Sudden would be an example of infidelity. When somebody is not faithful to the partner, the partner you realize that the relationship cannot be sustained. Gradual would be if you met somebody at work or a new friendship has occurred and you, as it goes on you see that okay, maybe this relationship has more potential than the relationship I have with my partner. And that will gradually push the old relationship out and push the new relationship in. Reasons relationships start to fall apart. Sometimes you no longer find your partner attractive physically or in the personality. When you're in a relationship, you have to show desire, lust towards your partner. Sometimes when you get married, that the lust and the desire kind of fall by the wayside a little bit. But if you want your relationship to keep going, I would suggest maybe go to a place where you first met, or go to some budget, go somewhere that will bring the excitement. You no longer experience closeness or 
When your differences become more important than similarities, you just take apart your partner. And you don't see anything that you have in common anymore. You just see something he or she does and it just gets on the nerves and you just can't let that go. You feel you might do better with someone else that you've met. You've met. You think that you can no longer do that your partner is someone that you can't be with. You could call this having a type. I believe that Watts had found himself attracted to a similar type of female in NK. I believe as an avoidant personality, Watts was going to be able to avoid confrontational issues in life by having a somewhat pejorative description, but for lack of wasting your time, a bossy or domineering female. That's who he had decided to spend his life with. This way, he's able to avoid stressful financial, family, and social issues beyond the domineering limelight of his partner or spouse. I believe he had found this in NK much as he had found her in his wife. And research would suggest that malignant narcissistic females are more likely to become involved in extramarital affairs due to their lack of empathy, self-importance, and their ability to convince themselves that it's a grandiose title or position. They're certainly more apt to disregard rules and boundaries. Admiration from others and affairs go hand in hand, yeah? This can help enhance the self-esteem of a narcissistic personality. Also, you know, they kind of have this whole propensity for risk-taking behavior, a disregard for consequences, a willingness to engage in dangerous behavior. Why would an avoidant male be drawn to narcissistic personalities? Well, because they may be familiar. It could be due to past experiences or having a narcissistic parent or having already been in a relationship with a narcissist. Narcissists can provide quite a boost of ego. Their personalities can draw you in, make you feel special, important. To boost the ego of an avoidant male, well, it can go a long way towards his feeling of inadequacy. It can help him feel more secure about himself for a time. Exclusive this morning, the parents of Chris Watts speaking publicly for the first time since their son pleaded guilty to killing his pregnant wife and two young daughters. Watts, who's from Fayetteville, admitted to police that he killed his wife, Shanann, who grew up in Southern Pines, and their two daughters in a fit of rage. Their bodies were found back in August on the property of a Colorado oil and gas company where Chris Watts used to work. His parents, Ronnie and Cindy, didn't want to show their faces, but they are different defending their son, telling ABC 11 he is not a monster. The Watts said their son's relationship with Shanann was abusive and felt she isolated Chris from his family and the time they were together. Chris's father, Ronnie, said he believes the initial thing Chris told police, that he killed his wife only after finding out she had strangled their daughters. hard for me to believe that he, he would hurt them girls, no matter what. No matter the story, the story. Why he told me that night, I'm, I believed it. So. And in the last hour this morning, we received this statement on behalf of the parents of Shanann Watts. It reads in part, Shanann Watts was a faithful wife and the most gentle and loving mother in the world to her children, Bella, Celeste, and Nico. Monday evening, the parents of Chris Watts gave an interview in which they attempted to defend their son. In doing so, they felt the need to make vicious, grotesque, and utterly false statements about Shanann. Their false statements, however hurtful and inaccurate, will never alter the truth about Shanann and will never alter the truth about the crimes committed by their son, Chris Watts. Chris Watts' plea deal means that authorities in Colorado will not seek the death penalty. John. Leaks peeks beyond the narrative of the Watts case. A topic of intense interest and one of the most intriguing aspects of the case was the mistress. You know the one. She hit the scene and despite many efforts to uncover her identity, she remained a mystery guest. An unlockable character until the plea deal was signed. There's something about mysteries and mistresses that make for intriguing tales. The Watts case, no exception. The public was left wondering who this woman was and what role she played in the tragic events that unfolded. Finally, with the plea deal intact, some of the questions were answered, but this enigmatic figure will remain forever shrouded in mystery, leaving us to wonder about the details that we may never know. However, in this playlist, we're going to begin delving deeper into the story and uncovering the peaks and glimpses of what was really happening.
beyond the surface level narrative and beyond the lies in the world of murder, affairs, and deadly secrets. In this world, fatal victims and mistresses are just some of the players. My, isn't it remarkable how times have changed. In terms of information accessibility, in the past we relied on libraries, encyclopedias, and other reference materials to find relevant information about a topic. With the advent of internet, we can now easily search for anything we want on search engines like Google. Sometimes the results are quite surprising. Do you ever think that when Nicole Kessinger searched for Amber Fry's net worth, she anticipated that her own name would one day be more associated with the results than Amber Fry? Nowadays, when you Google the same thing, mostly find things about Kessinger herself and her involvement in the Watts case. The internet has certainly changed the way we access information indeed, such as our access to studies and reports on the frequency of affairs in the gas and oil industry. These studies suggest that it's a common problem and reported higher levels of infidelity. This one surveyed a thousand oil industry workers in 2014. It found that two-thirds of respondents had witnessed infidelity in their workplace at some point in their career. So of course, these reports don't provide definitive data, but the rates of affairs in the industry, well, they suggest a notable problem. And it's only one of a vast array of problems for the oil and gas industry. And Adarko itself was subject to several Me Too articles where women from the workplace describe a male-dominated world where sexual harassment and workplace affairs are ignored. And as we endeavor to uncover this Nicole Kessinger data, I find it difficult to believe that anyone finds her entirely blameless. But hey, let's do this. Let me tell you why I don't think she is. She mentioned that she couldn't be the reason for what happened. In some sense, I guess that's correct. These problems existed long before she became involved. However, it's highly unlikely that she didn't play a role. If this affair hadn't occurred, it's hard to imagine how the simulation would have played out. Antisocial avoidant personality may be drawn to repetition compulsion and a trauma bond due to their inherent difficulty in forming and maintaining healthy emotional connections with others. This behavior can be triggered by underlying trauma, such as childhood abuse or neglect, which can create a sense of familiar comfort in the repetitive action. It may also be driven by a desire for control or a fear of vulnerability and emotional intimacy. A trauma bond occurs when a person becomes emotionally attached to another individual who is abusive or harmful. In the case of an antisocial avoidant personality, this may manifest as a pattern of seeking out destructive relationships or friendships. The trauma bond can provide a sense of validation or self-worth, even if the individual is being mistreated. This can also reinforce the repetition compulsion behavior, as the individual may feel trapped in the cycle of abuse and unable to escape. Overall, the combination of repetition compulsion and trauma bonding can create a self-perpetuating cycle that reinforces negative patterns of behavior and makes it difficult for an antisocial avoidant personality to break free from harmful relationships or destructive behavior. Trauma bonding can manifest in a variety of dynamics. An individual may stay in a romantic relationship with someone who is emotionally or physically abusive because they feel deeply connected to the abuser and are afraid of losing them. A child who has experienced neglect or abuse from a parent may feel a sense of loyalty and attachment to that parent, even if they know that the parent's behavior is harmful. An adult may continue to seek approval or validation from a parent or other authority figure who has been emotionally abusive, due to a deep-seated emotional connection that is difficult to break. In each of these situations, the trauma bond is driven by an intense emotional attachment that develops over time as a result of the abusive behavior. This attachment can create a sense of dependency and loyalty, even when the individual knows that the behavior is harmful or destructive. Over time, the trauma bond can become deeply ingrained in the individual's psyche, making it difficult to break free from the abusive relationship or dynamic. Often, it can take external intervention or self-reflection to begin the process of healing and breaking the cycle of abuse. It's important to note that trauma bonding can occur in any type of relationship or dynamic, not just romantic relationships. It can also occur in friendships, family relationships, and even in professional or mentor-slash-mentee relationships.
more of those simulations don't end in as much violence or as much devastation as the ones where Kessinger is the main player in that simulation. I think the chances are a lot higher that the catalyst ends in something tragic, with all of these different personalities stewing. Many have pointed the finger at Shanann for having an affair with her boss. At least it was the boss and not an employee. Oh, what a narcissistic statement you make, my dear. The better to analyze you. In comparison, though, as far as what I was able to find, Shanann always made sure to ask after her boyfriend's little kiddos, as she would call it, the kiddos. I doubt NK was doing any such thing. In fact, she was talking to her friends about backing out of the relationship because... She wasn't going to get to have her first with him. I have to be the only one, or else I'll go on dates and be done. Or at least I'll tell you I am. Yeah, because she told him she was going on dates, but she got stood up, so now she's here to hang out with you instead. Shit you not, not once, but twice. Tammy points out that, obviously, Shanann was pregnant on Facebook, and NK had to know. I've always found it a bit naive to really peg all of this whole atrocity on period point blank, the whole issue being Nico being a boy. I'm not sure why that would be the catalyst, as NK would say. He said, I took his breath away. Back to the point. That is a really strange catalyst. I guess that was going to be there. 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 It was gonna be there. It was gonna be there. Time to shine. I'll have your only son. You'll be all mine. It's like the Anne Boleyn, Catherine of Aragon, Henry VIII tragedy. What if you don't have a son? This is what happened to Anne Boleyn when she didn't have a son. Just another tartar? Off with her head. Four things that we should note about Nicole Kessinger is her lack of empathy. She tells her f***ing friend whose dad died, being mad at me won't bring your dad back. Boy, I swear. <laughs> O-M-M. She seems to have the more level head of the two. Well, that was until she called the cops to double check that her information wasn't going to go to the public. So then therefore, the report of her checking to double check about her double checking was, you know, double checked by the public. Damn. But other than that, she seemed to have her family shit together because she was like, bruh, you gotta get your shit together. If you're gonna date a dad, you're gonna date the kids too. It's a package deal. Again, you know, she's so cute and adorable. A lot of people were angry at the police that, well, you know. I couldn't toast a piece of bread with the heat they were putting on you. While this may seem true, whenever you pair it with the idea that nobody really investigated NK thoroughly, via these interviews and what i mean by that is whenever she's brought up by chris multiple times we don't hear much digging they dig into every other detail and it's dad they dug into chris watts's shithole after he buried it at the second job site that day and yet since dear and Kay told her boyfriend chris to get rid of facebook not just any old delete but the old delete my shit for permano request Apparently, the CBI didn't get the identifying factors right. What they received from Facebook was, well, Christina Meacham's Facebook. Oops. <laughs> what the hell were they going to do with that? Not sure. Anyways, they never recovered Watts' Facebook. Thanks, NK. Even though, you know, well, she's that type of intelligent that she thought about how to get rid of the cops' plans to undelete her text messaging, but not her Google searches. Doink. Nobody's perfect. I mean, I thought what we had, it was very comfortable for me. I enjoyed it. I think he did very much as well. You guys, you, six, eight weeks, two months, whatever it was, you guys had an intimate relationship during that time. Yes. Okay. So you're, you're pretty serious. Um, did, did he ever tell you that he loved you? Yes, he did. 
Did you ever tell him the same? A couple times. Okay. Um, not withstanding that today, because that may those thoughts may have changed for you. But on, let's go, Mon Sunday into Monday or Monday, did you did you still love him on those days? I think it was something where it was like I I said it a few times and I meant it, but he definitely felt the urge to say it to me a lot more than I did to him because it was just all very new to me and I was like take your time with this like you don't need to to like rush that you know like I remember when he was in North Carolina and he was like trying to patch things up with his wife and he told me he loved me and I was like don't say that to me like <laughs> she was very non-responsive to him trying to to like solve problems and like get out of the situations that they were in and I think people just get complacent is what it is and then you know sometimes people when the relationship starts to dissolve, repair is not an option and they want to get away and start new. When you want when you act when you want to go into repair, you need to analyze what went wrong and consider what ways of solving the problems. You need to consider changing your behavior or perhaps changing your expectations for your partner. And you might also want to evaluate how you could feel in the relationship and relationship if it had ended. One of the first stages of repair you need to recognize. Identify the problem. What changes do you need to make to make the relationship better? That's what it is. And then, you know, I think uh, he met me, and I think I was like a breath of fresh air for him, where it was like he could get away and just be like, you know what, I can be myself. I don't have to worry about money right now. Like, you know, and this girl, like, I have my shit together. Like, my life is so, like, very in you order. You seem very uh, organized and independent and dialed Always. in like, I do for really 30. Good at, I do really good at work. I have, like, almost a perfect credit score. I've been saving money for a house. Like, I don't mess around. I mean, I did. I screwed up. This is, like, my one screw up ever, and it's about to be on, like, national news. But, um, just very dialed in. And I think it was, like, a breath of fresh air for him to, like, be around something like that because I don't think that he knew that that was like a real thing and he had told me that like numerous times so, like I didn't know like women like you like existed. Trolling and possessiveness, a comforting feeling maybe for Watts, who could have been struggling with a common issue. Repetition of abuse cycle, cauldron fire, a new girlfriend that insists she's not sure about the relationship because the boyfriend has already been married, has kids, and she hasn't indicating unrealistic expectations about the role of significant others in one's life. Obviously, she lacks some understanding about complexities in parent-child and girlfriend-boyfriend relationships. For grown-ups, anyway. Patience, sacrifice, understanding. This demand around her time. What do we have? A girlfriend who wants to prioritize her boyfriend's life and doesn't seem to understand the complexity of the parent-child relationship and how that's about to impact her life in a big way. Selfish. And she wants to be the first wife, presumably with someone who's had no kids before. Desire for a perfect relationship. This doesn't exist in reality. Obviously, unrealistic expectations were going to be a big part of Watts' future as well as his past. If he was leaving... The skillet, the cauldron, or the beautiful Shanann. Moreover, this new girl is going to frown upon you for your so-called financially well-off life, where, you know, you were too much of a to stick up for yourself. This adds an unhealthy level to the dynamic indeed. The implication here is that she makes judgments about people based on their financial situations. Now, of course, you know, this could come handy if you're analyzing someone's psychological frame of mind, etc, etc. But we can tell she kind of frowns upon poor people. I would never let someone mess me up or, oh, he's house poor, house poor, house poor. Now, they're in the hole, and this new girlfriend is dismissing a lot of complexities off the top. Lack of empathy, quite an attitude, and despite what she says about being so different from his wife, we see an undue amount of importance being placed on material wealth how much she has in savings, superficial factors. These could have all or no. This can lead you right into a self-centered relationship, which obviously isn't concerned with deeper aspects of life or relationships. She also constantly refers to this wife as, well, wife, and does not use her name at all. Is it a sign she's distancing herself emotionally or 
Is she in a state of denial? Or is she indicating to Watts, it's your responsibility, not mine? She could have a desire to avoid her feelings of empathy if she has any, and her obvious connection to this wife. Another possibility is that she's dehumanizing Shanann. Shanann actually often did this to Chris Miller's wife, as I mentioned in one of my previous episodes. She constantly says, say hi to your wife, say hi to your wife, and rarely calls her Sharon. Overall, this could be a mistress's way to reveal important insights into their own emotional states and their own motivations. Despite fake news, I found out that an analyst found NK. She located her, they contacted her, and NK contacted them back. She absolutely did not move to contact them first, according to their reports. However, she was used as a witness by the affiant. That is, the investigator asking the judge in this motion. And the text reads as though N.K. turned herself in, but the reports read quite different. We're going to go over this and a whole lot more. They met in secret behind closed doors, and all the while she wanted more and more. But one day the man was caught in the act, and off to prison he was sent. That's a fact. The mistress was left with nothing but sorrow. She realized too late she wanted no tomorrow. For she had signed up for too much to bear. The consequences, oh, they glare. Her heart was broken, her dreams shattered. She had to run away from all that mattered. Packed her bags and headed west. Desperate, escape in pain and mess. As she was leaving, something caught her eye. A little spoon, she couldn't deny. It had belonged to her lover, true, in happier days. Now it was her comfort in many ways. With her spoon in hand and a heavy heart, she set out to make a brand new start. Though she'd lost in more than ways than one. Done. For love is its own kind of jail. Sometimes, you just have to set sail. So she went on, with her spoon in tow, a reminder she had to let go. In the end, she found her own way. Good luck to her. She lived another day. Somebody is not faithful to the partner. The partner's realized that the relationship cannot be sustained. Don't play with me until your kids are away. Which is, you know, 6 p.m., so I don't even have to wait that long, low-key. What a sad story. For the two characters we can actually get behind, Little Bella and Celeste, everyone sucks here. I mean everyone, all the way up to the big wigs that these work for. Like I said, it is unpredictable, but the methane randomly travels with the water and sometimes it will light quite spectacularly. Just like that. Tank sight. He climbed the catwalk, opened the thief hatch, was overcome by gas and soon after was found by another trucker, motionless. It wasn't just the relationship between this contractor and this maintenance dude. It was surrounding a whole heap of issues that the oil and gas industry deals with anyway including the thief hatches all the way up their ass constantly, not to mention the millions that they lost in revenue earlier since the Firestone tragedy, where they rocked a house off of its foundation because some maintenance worker turned on an abandoned oil line. Later on, I get the feeling that the victim of that seemed to be indicating that the victims weren't installing a hot water heater. However, that seems to be the story that was perpetuated. She didn't exactly come out and say this, but she never mentioned I'm confident that you'll gain some knowledge from this segment, or at least from the segments in this playlist. In fact, I believe you'll be able to dispel many of the myths and offer lots of explanations for why so many conspiracies have arisen around this case. Weld County is a vital contributor to the gas and oil production of Colorado. It has the largest oil and natural gas reserves of any county in Colorado. It holds 89% of the state's crude oil production, more than 40% of the state's natural gas output, and is responsible for almost 70% of the state's oil refinery capacity. 
A part of the county's significance is due to its location over the denver julesburg Basin. It's located in the heart of this basin and is one of the most productive oil and gas counties in the state. The DJ Basin is a major petroleum producing region and it spans parts of Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska, and Kansas. Weld County is positioned in the western flank of this basin and it's a key area for oil and gas exploration. And as a result of this, well folks, business is a boom for Weld County. Furthermore, the county's unique geological formations, such as the Niobrara Shell Formation, make it a highly desirable area for oil and gas drilling. Companies have invested heavily in the region and have established a strong presence in the industry, contributing significantly to the state's economy. Well, the county's location is also a major storage and distribution hub for natural gas. This makes it a critical player in the gas industry. As a result, Well County plays a significant role in sustaining the needs of not only Colorado, but the country as a whole. The debate surrounding the fracking process at full capacity in Colorado. It's no secret that worldwide efforts of large oil and gas companies have exerted pressure on the legal system to maintain their industry's viability. They accomplish this through their lobbying efforts. Oil and gas companies have donated money to lobbying the justice system through various channels. These companies have created special interest groups, or PACs. These committees funnel money into political campaigns and make direct donations to candidates that they support. These contributions often come with strings attached. The company expects the candidate to support policies and, well, benefit their industry. Duh. Additionally, oil and gas companies often hire lobbyists to represent their interests in elected officials. Judges, members of the justice system. Line them up. Lobbyists meet with these decision makers to make their case and their policies, and that would obviously support the oil and gas industry in this case, and of course, the bottom line. There are also instances of oil and gas companies providing direct funding to judges and other officials. While this may not be illegal, it can create conflict of interest and raise questions about the impartiality of the justice system. Overall, the donations and lobbyist efforts of oil and gas companies aim to influence the decisions of lawmakers and the justice system in their favor. This obviously has significant consequences for the environment, public health, and the overall well-being of communities and litigants and defendants impacted by the industry. For an employee, well, this is an employee that has the financial resources to lobby the justice system. They're able to sway decisions in their favor, even if it goes against your interests. Poor old innocent employee. Obviously, unjust conviction, severe punishment, and wrongful termination is not above and beyond in the practicalities of circumstances. Obviously, reputation and career of employees, and obviously the wrongfully convicted, well, it must seem like a beast possible to tame or conquer. So, did the Dark Ones actually take interest in the Watts case? Well, they were monitoring it, and therefore, I'd say, yeah, they had a steak. Yummy. Cook it up. You can just ask Amber Falbo. She made a report. She spoke with someone she would later say seemed not interested in taking her report. She worked with Chris Watts at the Dark Company. There were a couple of private Facebook groups that discussed the murders and someone accused her of having an affair with Wands and being a homewrecker. She said they posted her address as well as pictures of her family. She iterated that she is not a part of these groups but that the actions were borderline harassment. She said that she could send screenshots and snapshots to prove it. Later, the CBI follows up with Amber's report, except by this time they're just following up to investigate her connection to Chris Watts, even though she had stated that she didn't know Chris Watts. She's never seen or met Watts, and that they just happen to work for the same damn company. Falvo said recently she had been targeted on Facebook by several people accusing her of being the other woman in the Watts life and wrecking the Watts fam. Falvo said these comments didn't rise to the level of threats according to the ED whenever she first made her report. And then there's also that fancy part where she communicated that she would have known this had Anna Darko not hired a third party to monitor all social media related to the Watts case and any connections to Anna Darko. So did the Dark Ones do it? Well, yeah, I guess they did. They monitored it and then they cared. They cared. Yeah, they cared. They cared a little bit. Just saying. It's okay, Dark Ones. We all, y'all know I'm just playing now. Don't be tripping. Okay. So what about that yummy steak? Well, there's been various studies and reports on the frequency of affairs and there could also be some public lawsuits. That didn't seem to be the case though because old NK, well, she tended to disappear just as quickly as she came. Let's talk about a company that are literal 
fucking billionaires, okay? One billion is a way larger than one million, despite my inability to believe that people actually understand this. When Anadarko Petroleum Corporation was acquired by Occidental Petroleum, not Chevron as is often tooted in the crime forums about this case, this was back in 2019, but they were worth approximately 57 billion. A million dollars is a lot of money, but a billion dollars is an astronomical amount. A million seconds is 12 days. A billion seconds is 31 years. A trillion seconds is 31,688 years.